2017 CNBC TV18 Overdrive Award Jury Round Special. As you can see, we are at the Chennai Race Track and we have a fabulous lineup of cars, motorcycles and scooters. We do believe that the jury members are going to have a really good set of two days. But before we get into the Car of the Year nominees, here's a quick look at our illustrious team that makes up our jury. The Car of the Year nominees are being judged on various aspects such as performance, value for money, practicality, affordability and judging them we have Tarun Thakral, a collector of several unique automobiles in India and the founder and trustee of the Heritage Transport Museum in Gurgaon. An out and out automobile enthusiast, Tarun lends in his experience to the Overdrive car jury this year. The youngest and incredibly quick member of our car jury this year is Indian professional race driver Arman Ibrahim. Arman's quick progression in his racing career from racing go-karts to Formula Swifts in the National Racing Championship to racing in various international championships over the years and currently the only Indian racing in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia Series, he's an apt juror to evaluate the various aspects of our car nominees. Dushyan Singh Rathor is a national level shooter representing Rajasthan and also a collector of classic cars and motorcycles. Film artist and scriptwriter Rahul Singh is also an avid car and motorcycle enthusiast and lends our jury the average consumer's point of view. Moving on to our resident jurors, Overdrive consulting editor Narayan Rupani has headed and driven exciting content for several automobile magazines over a span of three decades and also holds the distinction of having authored six books on travel and automobiles. And last but not the least, Overdrive Editor-in-Chief Bertrand D'Souza's illustrious career spanning 17 years boasts of driving a Formula 1 car to testing the fastest supercars and sports cars in various exotic locales and also road testing the newest exciting cars launched across various segments in India. Well, there are 21 diverse cars on the track today fighting for the coveted title of the Car of the Year and here are the nominees. The Compact Car of the Year, extremely tough category simply because uh, one, there is quite a few nominations in this category. It's not easy to see manufacturers bringing or providing all new cars in this segment, but we've seen quite a lot of uh, well developments over here. I think Datsun Redigo is a very good nominee for its particular bracket. I like the exterior a bit, the uh, backside is quite nice, nice curves, handles quite well. Uh, but when you come to the interiors, I think they could have done a slightly better job. Compared to the other cars in the segment, which is at this point in time uh, the Maruti Suzuki Alto, uh, you're still getting a fairly good uh, package with the Ready Go. But uh, again, the quality is not uh, upmarket. I think Datsun could definitely have tried and worked on the quality. They should have got the interior quality. Performance wise, it's a good engine, it's the same engine that's on the Quid, so we know that's a proven engine right now, reliable, been working its way up to the top, uh, gets a good, good fuel efficiency, decent performance, we're not looking at going very very fast, but as an urban commuter, it's a good enough uh, or rather healthy and robust package. Mahindra E20 Plus was one of my favourite cars that I drove around, very comfortable, very uh, small, easy to manoeuvre, I like the acceleration on it and the build quality is quite nice. I think it's a very good value for money for its eco-friendly tag. I think uh, Mahindra is in a good wicket out here. They've got the right, uh, well, they're setting off in the right direction and that is electric car and uh, well, alternative fuel cell, uh, fuel powered cars. And uh, the E2O is a good proposition for someone looking for something within short commute. I think some of its drawbacks are the quality of plastics, the overall design. You do not need to look like a futuristic uh, fancy or you know very funky hatchback to be selling in the market. A conventional hatchback, good work, good body work, good design, good ergonomics will, uh, will outdo anything else that you have to and will make a far more stronger statement for that matter where electric cars are concerned. The Iberito again is another, uh, well Mahindra is another second take on uh, the electric car platform and I think uh, this is a smart move to have provided an electric powertrain in uh, the sedan uh, that they already possess, the rights to making that, uh, well the Logan sedan. Uh, Mahindra could have worked a little better on the entire packaging, definitely worked a little bit more on the exterior styling, worked a little bit more on the interior details as well. If they had to get all of that sorted out well enough, I think this would have been a fantastic car. When you drive the Iberito on the track, it the acceleration is not there that you might need on a highway for overtaking. 
It might do well in a city uh, in crowded areas, but when it comes to acceleration, I think E20 Plus is built quite well and is good value for money in that price bracket. Tata Tiago is another favorite of mine. I like the exterior a bit. Looks like a shark when you look at it at first sight. Uh, drives quite well, handles quite well. The plastic quality for the interiors, uh, some point could be better, like the dashboard and all. But there are some nice corners that they've done with the air vents and all, which are quite nice. Good engine, refined, uh, sufficiently refined, I'd say for that matter, for this segment. Uh, good performance, decent fuel efficiency. The price factor well weighs heavily on uh, this car as well because uh, well it's it's quite good value for money overall if you look at it. Not a bad car overall. We've been driving it at the track and uh, irrespective of whether we drive it fast or we drive it slow, we try out all of those elements: braking, handling, steering. The Tiago has worked well uh, everywhere. So I think one of the strong contenders for car of the year and the compact car of the year has to be the Tata Tiago. Volkswagen's big uh, draw is going to be the compact car market. They did not have uh, well a sub four meter sedan in this market at all, and uh, with the AMIO coming in, they have been able to reach out to a wider customer base. But the AMIO as a product itself, well, it definitely stands out simply because it's got uh, all the inherent qualities of the Polo. So you've got uh, phenomenal ride and handling. You've got a great space package inside. You've got uh, great quality of uh, all the materials that are that are sitting inside that cabin or on the outside for that matter as well. The only thing lacking in it, I think. Uh, Volkswagen would definitely have worked on a little bit a little harder would have been the power trains. I think we definitely would have liked to see better both petrol and diesel power trains. I think that would have made it an outstanding car in its segment. Amio, I like the engine of the Amio. It's got a very good automatic gearbox. But the only bad bit I would say is the design from the backside is very um, flat at the back end. But it handles well, drives well, the interiors are nice and good fun on the racetrack. In the premium car of the year, we have a very stiff competition this year between the Audi A4, the Skoda Superb and the Hyundai Elantra. The Audi A4, we all know, is a very good package. It, of course, has a great brand image also. It brings that to you. Overall, it's a very nice car. But in my opinion, it's the more practical and uh, more economical cars and would be the Skoda Superb and the Hyundai Elantra. Skoda Superb, a very nice car with uh, understated styling, uh, very nice interiors, very well designed car, great driving dynamics. The Hyundai Elantra surprisingly also has very good driving dynamics, a very nice interior, it gives you lots of features. And I would pick it up over the Skoda Superb because of its uh, Hyundai's better track record of uh, service and cost of maintenance. The Hyundai Elantra is definitely a smart looking car and uh, smart looking interiors as well. And um, I, I tried to sit, you know, I sat in front as well as at the back. The comfort is there along with a smart look. Uh, what I like about Elantra is its design, uh, the fluidity in its design, the handling of the car is quite nice, it uh, corners quite well and especially when you drive it in the sports mode, it's a treat on the track. Uh, but when you compare the interiors to the other competitors, the A4 and Superb, I think it lacks a bit, but then it makes up in the value for money quotient that it has. I like the interiors of the A4, uh, they've done a very good job, it feels like a car which is not from this particular segment with the kind of features it has, drives quite well, handles quite well and also the space, they've given a lot of space in the car, um, finish quality is very nice, so it's a, other than the price bracket, I think it's a very good car. Audi A4, now yes, elegant and smart looking car, good interiors and you know, uh, 1400cc. Good speed, very good pickup, all those things are there. But uh, when you advertise all these things, and when I mean, all these things are a fact about the car, the consumer wants that he should be able to afford it. There are other cars also that have similar features, and they're also not priced between 36 to 44 lakhs, which this one is. I think they could work on the price. 
Super, I think, has always been one of the favorites for a chauffeur-driven car, but I drove this one for the first time on the track. It is fun to be on the track. It is. It rides quite well. Unlike the uh, perception that people have that it is for people to sit at the back and it's a chauffeur-driven car, but it drives quite well. The Skoda Superb is an elegant looking car, smart exteriors and uh, yes, quite luxurious interiors. And I've driven Skodas before, but I can uh, feel the difference between having driven a Skoda earlier and uh, this one that I just drove, the Skoda Superb. Another nominee in the car of the year and surprisingly is the BMW 7 Series and this is because of the regulations that govern the uh, CNBC TV18 Overdrive Awards and that's that every car has to be either manufactured or assembled in India and the 7 Series is one of those cars that is assembled in India so well of course it qualifies and for a car that is made out here that's built over here I think uh, there's a great amount of quality the fit and finish is definitely very refined those engines keep in mind are being made in India here at Force Motors plant in Pune so there are a lot of elements that uh, well will definitely well uh, well nominated for uh, the Car of the Year uh, award. This year's UV is actually quite a mix. I mean, you have two uh, variants, like uh, one extent to the other, actually. So the Isuzu, I mean, one, we've all been very excited about this car because, you know, it just came here and it's quite different to everything else that we've had. It's enjoyable to drive. It's a solid car. Uh, there's a lot of space at the back as well. And I'm to take it off-road, take it to the beach, take it off-roading, I mean, on the mountain dunes and things, that'll be super fun. I don't see it in every car. I don't see you driving, I don't see myself driving it every day. The Isuzu uh, D-Max, uh, that's, it's a fabulous vehicle, especially if you want to take it out, uh, you know, like we, we guys go collecting a lot, collecting old cars, small parts, antiques. So for us, it, it, it really fits in perfectly well. Innova has done so well in this country uh, and it's served its purpose really uh, throughout the years and now they've come up with a new version which is even better I feel. Comfort levels, uh, the suspension is superb, uh, ride the bumps and you don't feel much, the ride is very pleasant. So again, uh, I'd say they've done a fantastic job and this car is again going to definitely serve its purpose and uh, do really well in the car. Krista has come out very well, but in terms of power I think it still lacks. Both the cars are relatively, uh, they're from a, they're more, uh, they're for different segments and different markets. I wouldn't rate them together because a family would definitely prefer a Krista than a D-Max. D-Max would be for individuals, for, you know, uh, people uh, who just want to go camping or hunting. In recent years, uh We've seen a new segment emerge, which is the compact SUV segment. And this year, the contestants are uh, the Maruti Suzuki Brezza, the Honda BRV, the Mahindra KUV, and the Mahindra Novo Sport. Mahindra KUV 100, again talking from the common man's perspective. Overall, considering all its features, whether the comfort or the sound of the engine and the engineering, uh, I think a lot of people are going to consider buying this because uh, first thing that a man sees, where, yes, fine, looks matter and all those, but when you buy something, you look at the money. And I think you're getting good, good value for money with this kind of car, this kind of engineering at that price. I'm actually disappointed by the Mahindra products, both of them. They fall short of uh, ergonomics, NVH, I mean the gear shift levers. Mahindra still has a long way to go. The Honda BRV, uh, I'm not a big fan of its styling uh, because it uh, yet looks like an MPV and we all know it derived from the Mobilio. But uh, the interior is quite nice. Spacious, uh, very versatile with all the combinations of folding the seats down, lots of space to carry your stuff or the family. Really nice. 
quite a good value proposition also. But one thing they need to improve on is the refinement of the diesel engine. They have done a fair bit, but yet the NVH is uh, not in line with some of the competition. It's a sturdy car, the Honda BRV. I mean, you feel safe sitting inside it. You can certainly drive around with your family. You can, I think, probably uh, go a little bit off road also. It's, uh, it's good for outings. There's enough space inside. Leg room is good. There are other cars in the segment which cost slightly lesser. So somebody uh, who would want to buy it would, would take that you know, into account. The Maruti Suzuki Brezza, I think they've done a good overall job, space utilization, styling, and it looks like an SUV. So I definitely go for the Brezza. Smart looking car, a young car well priced as well, though again compact, but I think Maruti has this, uh, they have this understanding of the use of space. So there is room, again as being a tall man, I look at leg room first. And uh, even behind, I mean, you can sit comfortably and you can sit with a child in your lap also. So quite a few people can fit in. And again, it grips the road well. Premium SUV, what do you want from it? You need, uh, you need space, you need comfort, uh, you need uh, good dynamics from the car. Obviously, uh, the visual appearance has to be good as well, and it has to have performance. With the Mercedes GLC, I think it's a superlative car. Uh, full marks to it. Uh, I especially drove it on, on a low speed just to check how it reacts, uh, you know, when it's uh, on very low gears. And it, there was no vibration, there was no sound at all in the, in the compartment. It just felt like you were actually sailing. So the Mercedes GLC, one typical Merc, a very strong engine, really nice drive, feels really solid and safe inside it. The brakes were really good. Surprisingly enough, even though most of the weight is in the front, but I mean the engine, with the engine being in front, I felt like the, most of the weight was to the middle of the back. When you drive it especially, you find it uh, when you go to you know, when you try and carry uh, high speed through corners and you know you lean on the car, all the weight is basically transferred to the mid to the rear, and the front is qu gets quite light. You know, uh, I would hope that there was a little more weight distribution towards the front, which uh, which would actually give the driver a little more confidence when he's going on the high when on the highway. Maybe a little more space in the, in the back seats, but in the front is very comfortable and obviously a lot of boot space as well. So overall, I think I, it is worth its price and uh, it is it, it is a good uh, package car. The X1, again, uh, to me, was a typical driver's car. Uh, the seating position and the driving position was really good. Uh, comfortable straight away um, and uh, a nice peppy engine. Uh, I mean, the torque was really good, but I think it, it, it plateaus out quite uh, quite quickly. So on long drives, you uh, it would get a little boring uh, once you're on the highway. Uh, apart from that, you know, the space is quite good, uh, both front and rear, no problems at all. Uh, I think it is better than, the, than its uh, predecessor. They have improved it. I just wish that there, there was a little more juice in the engine uh, and that, I think that is where they can improve. I mean, it's a BMW, so it definitely fits in there. They've come out with this. Uh, it's a pretty solid vehicle. Um, I drove it. And in fact, I took about three, four laps on it. Um, it's a very comfortable drive amongst my ratings. My own ratings, uh, it, it's actually there, right at four on five type of a rating purely. Uh, when you look at the comfort, the ride quality, and uh, you know the grip on the on, on the on the on the road. The Ford Endeavor was a pleasant surprise. I was not expecting, and this was my first drive in in, in this car. And uh, I had driven the Ford Endeavor earlier. It's a remarkable progress what they've done, and I think it's going, actually going to compete very well amongst the other segments, uh, amongst the other cars in the same category. Because it weighs so much, you, you expect it to be a lot slower than the others, and uh, which is natural, but then uh, it surprises you. It comes around quite quickly. 
and it rides the bumps as you'd expect really well. The engine again has got it, it, it is quite powerful. It's got it's got quite a lot of meat in it, and uh, it's quite enjoyable to drive. No problems really. Only thing with the suspension was quite it's quite soft, too soft really. And uh, you know, it's, uh, one, especially when you go with the bumps, there's too much movement. And I think if you restrict that a bit, the ride would be a lot better, especially in the off-road section. Okay, for the value. Uh, it is a bit steep for, for, for this car, and um, so that is where that, that is where it's gonna get. I mean, that's what's gonna hurt it, I guess. Um, especially compared to its competition, it, it definitely is on the steep side. With the Hyundai Tucson, I was a little disappointed. Uh, there's a lot of hype uh, around the car, and it's recently been launched. But when you compare it with the others, the X1, the Ford Endeavor. Uh, it, I, I think it's a notch below. Uh, they could have done a little more uh, better than that. Overall, in terms of the drive, it wasn't as comfortable and solid as you would experience from a premium SUV segment. So that's one of the basic uh, things which I felt it was lacking in the power also and the way it handled on the road. The positives of the car are actually one it has a really good front end. Uh, you know, it's actually like a sedan, the front end. You know, it's so light and very responsive and takes you straight into uh, wherever you want to go. So that, that, that part of it is really good. The seating position was not bad. It could be a little better actually because while driving, you know, even on a short drive, I start getting a little bit of a backache because it is quite upright, you know. But uh, apart from that, you know, again, typical Hyundai, it, it again it feels very plasticky and feels very too light. Uh, for an SUV especially, you need, it needs to be a little more solid because again, it's a big car and you're going to be doing long distances. There's going to be a lot more passengers, luggage. And if it feels really light, and if it, it if you don't feel, uh, I mean, if it feels very plastic, if I might say, uh, that doesn't give you much confidence in it. So I think that's the main aspect that they need to work on. Everything else feels really good in that car. A little disappointed again. Uh, Toyota does have a great name, uh, and we all rely on that brand value. But the steering was a little hard. Um, I don't know whether it was in this particular model or this particular vehicle or generally there is a problem. And I certainly feel that with the Toyotas, they still haven't got the rear seat comfort right. It's, uh, you know, your head tends to touch the roof uh, pretty easily. Uh, and especially on Indian roads with bumps and all that, you definitely knock your head one or two times. Fortuna definitely, again, it's another step up from the predecessor. I mean, they've uh, definitely improved the the interiors of the car uh, and the exteriors. It looks, it's nice to look at as well. Uh, say for city, for city driving, it's a bit too sluggish for me, and it rolls a bit too much, non-responsive. But we do hope you enjoyed this week's show. We will be back next week with the contenders for the motorcycle and scooter of the year categories. Thanks for watching.